An analysis has been conducted in terms of the legal, ethical and privacy issues present in the first case study regarding the collection of Mrs. Foote's unsolicited personal medical records. With Paradise Insurance Company getting a hold of sensitive medical information unrelated to the claim, it causes ethical and legal issues by breaching the Privacy Act of 1988. The Australian Privacy Principle 6 has also been breached as the information disclosed was done so without Mrs. Foote's consent. Data governance is a present issue in the case study and with the lack of formal data short sure position in the insurance company, it led to an unfortunate data exchange issue. The situation could have been avoided with the implementation of various strategies to avoid legal and ethical issues, with communication being a major factor. By implementing clear policies and informing Mrs. Foote of the potential risk of collecting unsolicited data, the situation could have been prevented and avoided the unexpected invasion of pri privacy. In turn, the GP should have also cross-checked with Mrs. Foote before disclosing information from the insurance company. There are a number of steps involved in the relations with Mrs. Foote and the company that could have been taken to resolve the issue as well. Mrs. Foote severely injured her knee, which has prevented her from working. As a requirement from an insurance company, Mrs. Foote had signed a clause in a claim authorizing Paradise Insurance Company to make any inquiries and get any information they consider relevant from a doctor. This meant that Mrs. Foote had consented to the company in accessing any personal information that the Paradise Insurance Company deemed relevant when lodging the claim. Mrs. Foote should have clearly read and understood what she was consenting to before signing the clause as it was dealing with sensitive information and involved disclosing her medical records to a third party. Paradise Insurance Company asked Mrs. Foote's GP to disclose information regarding her injury which they had full consent from Mrs. Foote. However, they did not follow the Australian privacy principles to be transparent to their client. Mrs. Foote was not aware that she had consented to allowing Paradise Insurance Company to access any information they deemed fit, only believing that medical records that related to injury would be accessed. It is vital that Paradise Insurance Company follow the APP guidelines to avoid such a situation particularly when sensitive information such as Mrs. Foote's medical records are being accessed. This had led to Mrs. Foote's insurance company accessing sensitive information that included her pap smear tests, colonoscopy, history of miscarriages and medications prescribed. Mrs. Foote felt that this breaks the patient confidentiality under the Health Privacy Code, located in the New South Wales Health 2015. Although Paradise Insurance Company had every legal right to access Mrs. Foote's medical records, this raises the ethical issues of how this information is to be stored and why this information was accessed. When dealing with sensitive information according to the health privacy principles, Mrs. Foote's data was not relevant to a knee injury such as pap smear tests and history of miscarriages. This is where Paradise Insurance Company had breached the Health Records and Information Privacy Act. Paradise Insurance Company was also not open to what they deemed was relevant to Mrs. Foote's injury. They should have informed what information was being asked of a GP and explained why the information that is being accessed relevant and important to a claim. Furthermore, the HPP clearly states that when collecting data organizations, they must only collect health information for a lawful purpose that is directed to that is directly related to the agency or organization activities and necessary for that purpose. Although Mrs. Foots consented for the Paradise Insurance Company to access sensitive information, this data was not deemed necessary and did not relate to Mrs. Foots' injury. Ethical issues are also a major concern following patient's information that has been disclosed without consent. Mrs. Foots' case is a breach of the Privacy Act of 1988 and the Australian Privacy Principles. The Privacy Act of 1988 clearly states that information or an opinion, whether true or not, and whether recorded in a material form about an identified individual or an individual who is reasonably identified. According to this Act, information obtained from a patient is sensitive and should not be disclosed unless required. Mrs. Foote's GP has revealed more information than the required knee injury information. The GP provided sensitive medical information that Mrs. Foote thought she had not consented. The Australian Privacy Principles includes an outline of how Australian health providers and some small bus businesses should deal with the patient personal information. There are 13 Privacy Principles that cover ethical issues on collecting and disclosing personal information. Mrs. Foote's GP has failed to comply with the Australian Privacy Principle 6 of use or disclosure of personal information. APP 6 is only able to disclose information where the individual has consented. As according to the APP, the individual, 
would reasonably accept the APP's entity to use or disclose the impersonal information for the secondary purpose, and that the purpose is related to the primary purpose of collection, located in the OIIC 2014. However, in this case study, Mrs. Foote's GP revealed sensitive medical information other than that information about her knee injury without her consent. An ethical concern involves a trust between a doctor and patient, which in this case, the GP and Mrs. Foote, the GP should have had a duty to protect the patient's personal medical information. Keeping the privacy of the patient's information is crucial to forming a trust between both individuals. In this case, Mrs. Foote's GP disclosed more than the insurance company had asked for. Data stewardship is the management and oversight of an organization's data assets to help provide business users with high quality data that is easily accessible in a consistent manner. Ruse 2016. Data stewardship is a tactical function which is short term, specific and local. There are six functions that data management technology should perform in an integrated fashion to promote data integrity, collaboration, workflow management and accountability among participants. These include data integration, data profiling, data quality, remediation for exceptions, document access and collaboration. With regards to the case study, the GP mistakenly provided the insurance company with excessive information which resulted in a breach of confidential medical data of Mrs. Foote. Data governance is a likely change that has been faced within this case study. The insurance company failed to create formal data steward positions where a data steward might function as both a data coordinator who tracks the movement of data inside an organization and a data corrector who understands and enforces internal rules on how data can be used. Regardless of how the position is structured, an effective data steward maintains agreed upon data definitions and formats, identifies data quality issues, and ensures the business users adhere to specified standards, which both parties have failed to do in terms of data exchange. The insurance company contacted the GP and requested him to provide copies of clinical notes, investigations and associated results, treatments, ref referrals, appointments and medication prescribed from the fir 1st of the 1st, 2015 to the present date which is non-specified and broad request, which is not comply with the high quality data. High quality data refers to the data that is unique, reliable, relevant, useful and concise. Moreover, there is data governance problem according to the Tech Republic 2013. If there is a question of who or what in the group of the organization is in charge of the administration of the data, in regards to definitions and making sure that of the data quality. The data storage is in charge of the making sure that the correct data is presented in the correct places and that the data is correct. At the GP's office, there had been a proper if there had been a proper data governance in place who had checked the information being sent through the insurance company, they would have ensured that the data being sent was leg legitimate and ethical. Both Mrs. Foote's insurer and the GP could have done things different that would not have resulted in Mrs. Foote feeling like her privacy was breached. After Mrs. Foote had severely injured her knee and filed a claim, then sh the company should have informed her about the nature and substance of personal information concerned within 30 days of receiving the request of permission to access the confidential knowledge. Her insurance company should have also noted that the information gathered may not directly correspond to the injury itself but explore potential factors surrounding the accident. Furthermore, they should inform Mrs. Foote that the severity of the information co that could be gathered as well as the confirmed her level of sensitivity on the personal information. By implementing these strategies and actions, it would minimize the discomfort and sense of privacy invasion that Mrs. Foote had experienced. Additionally, under the Australian Medical Association, guidelines <coughs> doctors should familiarize themselves with current laws and legislation regarding disclosing patients' personal information. Mrs. Foote's GP should have known only medical records relating to the me Mrs. Foote's knee would be relevant to insurance claim and only Mrs. Foote con Mrs. Foote's consent would other medical records that might not directly relate to initial injury would not also be explored before disclosing Mrs. Foote's medical records. Also, Mrs. Foote's insurance company should have clearly communicated what information that they needed for her to lodge the claim and whether we were exploring the other factors that might not directly correspond to the injury. If Paradise Insurance was to explore these other factors, they should have communicated this to Mrs. Foote and asked for her consent before asking her GP. Mrs. Foote also could have asked for clarification if the insurance company was also asking for medical records only regarding the injury or other factors. And if she was unsure, disclosing such information was all consented by Mrs. Foote. 
Although Mrs. Ford had given consent to the insurance company to collect relevant medical information, the GP should have cross-checked with Mrs. Ford herself before disclosing any information as well as information that has been handed over to the insurance company. Miscommunication between the GP and the insurance company contributed to the collection of unsolicited information. If both parties had been clear and sought clarification on their part, the situation could have been prevented. With the insurance company asking for medical records of a certain time, potentially caused for misunderstanding by the GP in not seeking clarification in terms of which information was required. If the insurance company had specified the information they required, it may have caused the GP to act with more caution. In turn, in providing information, the GP should have clarified with the insurance company as well. The insurance company may implement a policy that informs and allows the customers at any time to view the gathered information that was deemed necessary for the claim. Mrs. Foote could respond through writing at any time to correct, amend or delete recorded personal information about the client. Within 30 days after receiving the request, the comp company shall either make the change the consumer has requested or notify the client that they refuse to do so and allow, and allow them to state their reasons for refusal. Also, the insurance company should also inform the customer of their right to file a statement summarizing the reasons why a change should be made. If the company does not make a correction, amendment, or deletion, it must give a notice to this person designated by the consumer who have received the recorded personal information being corrected with the last, within the last two years. If the company has refused to make the requested change, the company must provide the consumer statement disagreeing with this refusal to anyone reviewing the disputed personal information, and shall also provide copies of of the statement to anyone that the consumer names who has received personal information within the last two years. Also, Mrs. Foote could have contacted the Insurer of Health Maintenance Organization HMO, directly to ask about personal information or to request a change in information that the company has on file about them. Furthermore, in accordance with the Australian Privacy Policy APP, the insurance company should implement policies that communicate the potential risk of accidental collection of irrelevant information to ensure policies are transparent and accurate, which in Mrs. Foote's case would have been prepared her for such a situation, and could have avoided legal issues for all parties involved. Upon, raising un upon receiving unsolicited information in accordance with the APP4, the insurance company should have immediately destroyed the information to avoid retaining Mrs. Foote's personal information on the system. All parties in this case should have communicated clear clearly to one another of what information was to be shared which would not have resulted in the patient's privacy being breached. Paradise Insurance Company should have communicated to Mrs. Foote if they were also investigate, investigating other factors that were not directly related to injury and asked for consent to access these records. If Paradise Insurance Company only required medical records that were relevant, they should have been clearer when communicating to Mrs. Foote's GP. Mrs. Foote should have also told her GP what information Paradise Insurance Company required. All parties were at fault and Mrs. Foot, Mrs. Foot's feeling of betrayal and upset could have been easily avoided. Finally, strategies could be put in place that could help alleviate the pain and embarrassment due to the lack of discretion from the insurance company. Things such as informing Mrs. Foot that, that she is able to ask for an internal review from a New South Wales public sector agency. Complain to the New South Wales Privacy Commissioner if she was not satisfied with the end result and if the Privacy Commissioner had written a report she has 28 days to apply to the New South Wales Civil and Administrative Tribunal for a further review on the decision. These subtle approaches will give Mrs Foote a sense of reimbursement, allowing her to feel alleviated and supported in the matter.